Hi everybody, I'm Serge Kilembe and thanks for joining me for this week US Market Weekly Reports and welcome to the well, uh, to the uh, Trading Wall Street TV YouTube channel. So without further ado, let's begin. And we're going to start off with the Dow Jones Industrial Average and you can clearly see here we are in a inside week candle for the second uh, consecutive week we are at the you can see here the uh, trend line the uh, bullish trend line acting as a support and we are here we are on the uh, trend line over here you can see that we had a let me amplify it. We had a, a bullish week, but we are still in a inside week candle. You know, we trying to go higher, but we rejected it, and we are still below the four weeks moving average and the eight week moving average, and we are right above the uh, twenty one week moving average. Uh, really, me, I was expecting uh, more move uh, towards the downside, more uh, bearish uh, movements. But you know, uh, for the uh, Apple uh, iPhone seven release, and you uh, and we saw a a new high new highs you know on the uh, nasdaq uh, composite and nasdaq 100 you know and that's uh that was the uh, leading uh, factor you know for uh, that uh, particular uh, bullish run and that's the reason why we can uh, the markets are uh, ma maintaining you know uh, that's a uh, bullish uh, sentiment and that's the reason why uh, why we are still in this uh, range this sideways movement so now that's mainly uh, you know for that reason and also uh, due to the uh, we had uh, the FOMC and the uh, decision the interest rates decision you know and that's the reason why uh, we can uh, we remain uh, stable for the moment you know but as you can see uh, this is uh, way more uh, this is uh, very very fragile you know we cannot hold uh, those levels uh, any longer you know so sooner or later uh, the bulls are gonna to are gonna capitulate, and we're gonna see uh, that uh, very very expected uh, bearish uh, uh, swing, you no know, bearish uh, movement, you know, because we are already uh, we are way 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 more uh, we are way above. This is not normal, you know, as you can see, we are oversold over here, oversold. You can see that now we are already in normal territory, but below uh, the 50 mark, we're going to go uh, more, uh, we're going to see more uh, bearish uh, movements now, because we cannot sustain prices and the markets cannot remain that high you know for the moment this is not saying this is not uh, natural the markets are being uh, pumped up uh, with free money by the fed courtesy of the fed and sooner or later they're gonna run out of bullets and we're gonna see that uh, that's correction you know I mean, i'm expecting uh, markets to go down towards uh uh, 17,000 points it's gonna be more uh, something more natural you know 17,000 points maybe uh, 16,000 points you know somewhere over here or over here first of all over here 
okay so now let's have a look at the diamond uh, and here on the diamond I had a I had a, a trade so I'm gonna explain that trade I had that train over here that trade over here uh, I was uh, in a short position you know uh, I, I was uh, selling shorts at one at a uh, hundred and eighty dollars you know I had a stop loss at a hundred and eighty five and my target was the uh, 52 weeks moving average over here at a hundred and seventy five dollars you know but I cancel I aborted uh, this operation because of uh, the psychology you know uh, it wasn't very it was a very very uh, demanding you know on the psycholo uh, psychological uh, level I bought the trade over here around uh, 182 uh, 50 and I, I got out you know with a small loss I didn't let the trade go higher and take uh, my stop. I couldn't be, I could be, uh, I could remain, you know, in the trade, but it was very really demanding, you know, uh, because I was expecting the markets to to go uh, lower very quickly, more in more in a more intense way. Uh, I wasn't not expecting the market uh, to see the market, you know, uh, act and react uh, like that. So. Uh, when you see the market and when you place a trade and that trade does not uh, you know uh, act as fast as you uh, was expecting uh, get out so me I prefer to get out waiting for another confirmation and then uh, uh, come back in so I replace another an, another order another uh, uh, short selling order at the same price but I'm expecting you know markets to go more quickly you know over here i had a successful trade you know and um, i want i wanted to see another uh candlestick another bearish candlestick like that you know over here so now i'm expecting the market uh, to go down but in a very uh with uh, with a lot of, with a, with uh, with much uh, velocity you know that's what I'm expecting, you know, because here, uh, you know, is messing uh, with my brain, you know, going down, going up, going down, going down, going up, and it's pretty tough to handle. And I wasn't uh, in a good mentality with the with the right mindset of psychology to handle that trade. So I prefer to uh, abort the uh, the operation and get out with a small loss but i'm gonna comment another trade another successful trade that i had with amazon so i'm gonna show you this uh, the trade that my trade idea was uh, was successful with amazon and the trade idea with amazon uh, I had that trade idea, you know, me, I was expecting Amazon to go towards the $800, uh, you know, I was expecting that since August, since the first week of uh, August, and then uh, the catalyst, uh, the, the catalyst for that trade was the uh, earnings, you know, Amazon had great, great, great earnings, so I'm gonna uh, give more detail, you know, of that trade idea right on here. I was expecting uh, Amazon to go to break uh, the $775 and to go and reach the uh, $800, uh, you know. So my the trade idea was uh, buy order over here at $775, stop loss down here at uh, $750. And then take profit over here at 800. You know, that's a 25 points. You know, due to the uh, the uh, volatility and the, the the price of Amazon, 25 points in less than two months. That was uh, possible, and that was a successful trade. You know, so that trade for me worked uh, very well, pretty well. And on the other side, uh, to cover. 
uh, that position I had a short position with the diamond but the diamonds you know are my order was filled as you can see just uh, two weeks ago three weeks ago and uh, I didn't like you know uh, the uh, the way that uh, the uh, I didn't like the uh, the price action so I decided to abort you know uh, that particular uh, trade and I remain in this one with Amazon and this one was very su uh, successful you know so as you can see Amazon was moving in a step stairs pattern you know you know like that bam 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 and bam and we are going towards the channels over here bam you can see over here we have that channel and we are in the direction of the uh, channels uh, resistance you know over here resistance and over here resistance so that was a great trade but as you can see now it's taking more time you know more time we have a huge uh, sideways uh, and lateral sections you know so I'm expecting uh, Amazon to go a little bit higher and then to move uh, sideways and then to pop higher and in the long term the, uh, the goal for me uh, with Amazon the target is uh, as you can see over here $850 okay so is well uh, that was uh, the only two trades that I wanted to discuss so now let's move on we already seen the Dow Jones the diamonds and now uh, let's have a look at the Nasdaq the composites and with the composites that's it you know another break higher new all-time highs but uh, you know uh, you see over here that uh, we are reaching the average but mm, i don't know it don't it doesn't look uh, well for me you know so me i'm very very cautious so i'm gonna i'm gonna wait and see uh, what's gonna happen you know next week so now let's move on the nasdaq 100 over here same scenario but you see that uh, that particular uh, candlestick over here it's more uh, of an indecision you know it's a spinning top you know so I don't see uh, much I don't it doesn't uh, tra tra transmit uh, confidence you know I don't I don't think that uh, the Nasdaq is gonna go higher because if you take a look you can see over here we have uh, the uptrend uh, channel and we are already at the resistance level you know first time at resistance over here second time at resistance over here so now I'm expecting uh, the markets I'm expecting to see another type of uh, sideways movement uh, during the uh, October the month of October maybe from October till November maybe we can come closer and reach the uh, 5000 points over here but mm, and then I'm I'm expecting uh, markets to go down and to reach uh, to come and retest maybe that uh, uh, resistance now supports over here or to come and retest to come and trying to retest and to reach the 21 MA or uh, even lower at the 52 AMA uh, region by that time maybe in November uh, those two moving averages will be over here some way around the uh, 4600 uh, level okay so now let's have a look at the Q the QQQ and the QQQ you already see that me I was expecting a, a short position you know I was um, expecting a, a short position I'm gonna see what uh, the price action is gonna be I'm gonna look at a uh, mm, I'm gonna stock pick you know I'm gonna do a little bit more of stock picking and have a look at uh, companies you know uh, within the Nasdaq and to see uh, what type of uh, companies may um, may have more uh, more uh, bearish uh, uh, bearish opportunities okay 
So now let's have a look at the uh, SMP 500s. First of all, you know, as I'd like to do here, I'm gonna come here on the sectors map and you can see technology was a great week. Bad week for Facebook and over here for Intel Corporation services, great week. Bad week for Walmart and Target. Um, bad week for the Priceline Group. Basic materials, mm, mixed week. Bad week for uh, for uh, Exxon Mobil, companies like SLB. Over here, uh, it's financials. Financials, great week for financials, except for investment banking and brokerage. Uh, as uh, you see here, investment bank. Goldman Sachs had a bad week, and CME Group had a bad week, and PayPal. In the consumer goods, consumer goods bad week for Apple. You know, uh, after the um, the launch of the iPhone, the release, excuse me, of the iPhone Seven, the price was at uh, one fifteen, and then look, uh, we had a three dollar loss so now we are at 112 Procter and Gamble bad week also General Mills bad week Nike zero mm, percent and finally over here healthcare great week for the healthcare sector and the industrial goods fantastic week and utilities perfect week okay so that's it for uh, the sectors now on um, let's go back to the charts and here in the charts we have uh, two bullish week but really we are in a inside week candle so three weeks with sideways movements well we are going nowhere so i'm expecting uh, more uh, more downside over here so maybe market's gonna come back and we test uh, the resistance, uh, yeah, the resistance over here. But you know, you see the the trend line over here acting as a support. I'm gonna wait for a a bearish uh, close below the trend line, and by that time, you know, uh, the 21 week AMA will be much higher, around 2140, 2145, and then yeah. I'm gonna start to uh, go uh, short on the markets, not with uh, the same anticipation than I had with the uh, diamonds. But uh, I need to see more uh, candlesticks like that, you know, in one or two weeks, boom, a continuation. And that's uh, what I was expecting, you know, with the diamond, but uh, that didn't occur and instead of that i had a sideways movement you know very very heavy uh, psychologically and i couldn't handle that and i decided to to go out okay now let's have a look at the uh, spy the spiders and over here the same scenario you see over here i'm expecting uh, to go short uh, below the 21 week MA but first I need to have a uh, confirmation as I had over here and so below um, 210 200 and yeah 210 dollars you know that past resistance over here below that level I'm gonna go short and the target would be uh, two hundred and five dollars, five uh, five points gain. That's possible. Okay, so now let's continue. Let's have a look at the VIX, the volatility index. What about the VIX? Mm, wait a second. Oh, okay, you see the VIX, huge volatility. Look at the spikes over here, close over here, gap up, and then boom sell off you know so i'm expecting the vix to go lower and to retest the 11 points mark and maybe to remain at that level for a couple of weeks so uh, i'm expecting uh, markets uh, to move a little bit higher and to retest uh, those all-time highs now let's continue uh, the Russell uh, 2000 
uh, yes US small cap okay over here the Russell 2000 same scenario inside weak candles sideways movements so now maybe uh, excuse me okay so now maybe well maybe we're gonna see that particular move over here yeah maybe we're gonna have that move over here from 1260 to 1285 1290 if not we're gonna remain in sideways uh, movement okay but if you take a closer look over here we had that uh, that past past uh, that past resistance now acting as a support over here and you see one time two times three times here and now uh, support support over here resistance over here and now support so markets came here bounce the rest will come here came here bounce over here and then a bounce back up so now I'm expecting uh, the market, the Russell, to go and retest to reach uh, that particular resistance over here. And then I'm going to wait and see. Let's have a look at the ETF, the IWM. The IWM, exactly the same thing. You can see here resistance one time, two times, three times. Now support, support over here, resistance. We're trying to reach but rejection over here and then boom over here support so that's a very very important uh, region level the 120 and now we are moving towards the 128 128 50 but first of all we need to clear 125 above 125 yes we're gonna go higher towards 128 and 50 and below that if you if we break uh, below the 120 level we're gonna go lower first of all one 117 and then 113 okay now let's have a look at the uh, treasury notes first of all the 10 year yields the yields bearish week we have a kind of a tweezer top over here we can see past support now resistance and over here a tweezer top so that means that we're gonna go lower and the yield for the 10 year treasury notes is at uh, 1.6 percent okay now let's have a look at the 30 year treasury bonds yield same scenario over here can see the uh, support over here we rejected it another trees at top and the yield is at uh, 2.3 percent and maybe moving lower okay now let's have a, a look at the uh, tradable Up, 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 up. at the uh, tradable tradable assets the tradable CFDs that we over here in Europe we can trade with uh, with those and uh, we are in a bearish uh, sentiment you can clearly see over here that uh, step stairs you know down that uh, bearish step stairs no first of all the triangle over here and then bam sideways movements and then i'm expecting uh i'm expecting uh the uh, 10 year treasury note to go lower you can see over here past resistance now support and i'm expecting uh that to go lower this week and to reach the 130 level now let's have a look at the us uh, the uh, 30 year bonds the tradable bonds and exactly the same scenario we see over here that uh, resistance now it's a, it, it's a support over here 
but when I um, look at this I see a uh, twist of bottom over here so maybe we can bounce over here and go higher or if you have a continuation uh, we can go lower in direction of this uh, trend line over here or we have the uh, 52 weeks moving average at 164 dollars so maybe if we go lower we're gonna come over here so over here we can do uh, what we call a, a straddle so we can place uh, two operations one trade uh, to the downside and another another order uh, to the upside right the one here above uh, 170 and 70 dollars you know to the upside and below let's say below 166 to the downside you know for three points yeah okay that's it and now let's have a look at the dollar index the dxy us dollar index sideways movement you know it's mm, it's completely messed up over here sideways movements we go up we go down we go up uh, right here over here we have a uh, bullish engulfing and over here we have a bearish reversal so we are moving sideways you see that the 52 weeks moving average and the 21 moving average are parallel and you see that in between we have the four weeks moving average and the eight week moving average and this is due to the uh, FOMC meeting the interest rates decision and we are going nowhere uh, that's that, that is just confusion you know the monetary uh, policy and all those uh, speeches you know at the fed from mr bullard uh, from uh, janet jellen the chairman uh, it's just uh, it's uh, it's nonsense you know and that causes uh, sideways uh, movement and uncertainty you know uh, markets are going nowhere we don't have any direction so me i'm expecting I need to see a direction above 96.50 towards the upside and below 95 towards the downside. So uh, that's it. And now um, let's have a look at the economic calendar. What do we have on Monday in the US? In the US on Monday, what do we have? See, you have a we have a bunch we have a couple of speeches at the ecb on monday at the us at 4 pm we have new home sales from august and right after we have a speech at the ecb for the uh, the governor the the, the chairman the the, presi uh, the the president of the ecb mr mario draghi and then what do we have some speeches you know at the fed at the federal reserve two speeches we're gonna have and then on Tuesday, what do we have on Tuesday? Bank of Canada, we have a speech. Bank of Japan, m monetary policy meeting minutes. And then what do we have in the US? US over here, we have some stuff. Yeah, another speech from Mr. Fisher. And at 7.30 p.m. in Grand Britain, Bank of England, Aldani uh, speech. On Wednesday, what do we have? Yeah, you see over here a speech at the Royal Bank of Australia. Another speech at the ECB from Mr. Draghi. Bank of England, Shafiq speech, another speech. Yeah, that's the uh, the week of the speeches. Uh, yeah, at 2.30 p.m. in the U.S. we have durable goods orders month of a month from August. We have a speech at uh, 2.45 p.m. at the Federal Reserve, Mr. Kashkari. And then at 4 p.m., very important, we have a speech from uh, the chairman, uh, Mrs. Uh, Jalad Jalan. And uh, a speech, a testimony. Right after, we're going to have a speech from Mr. Bullard. And then another speech from the ECB in Europe at 5 p.m. from Mr. Draghi himself. 
and then uh, some uh, speeches from Mr. Uh, at the Fed in the US from Mr. Evans and Mr. Master. Another uh, conference at the ECB later on that, that day, annual research conference. And then on Thursday uh, at 1.15 a.m., Fed George speech. Yeah, that's the week of all the speeches, you know. Mm, then, yeah, uh, here in Germany, we're going to have uh, employment change and employment rates. At 11 a.m. in the uh, EU business confidence from September, another speech from Mr. Pratt. And then let's proceed. Yeah, yeah, I saw a speech here at 11 a.m. from the Fed, Mr. Hawker, another speech. And then in Germany, we're going to have inflation we, uh, rates uh, year over year. And the, in the U.S. at 2.30 p.m., we have the GDP growth rates quarter over quarter, final quarter two. Uh, some data, yeah, at uh, 2.50 p.m. In the U.S., another speech from Mr. Lockhart. And right after, at 4 p.m., in the EU, at the ECB, a speech from Mr. Constancio. Another speech at 4 p.m. from Mr. Powell of the Federal Reserve. In Mexico, we're going to have interest rate decision. And at 10 p.m., Janet Yellen speech. And right after, at 10, uh, 15 p.m., uh, a speech from Mr. George. And then later that night, in Japan, Bank of Japan, Governor... Mr. Kuroda, another speech. And then Friday, what do we have here in Great Britain? The uh, GF, GFK consumer confidence from September. Mm, and then in Japan, we have the unemployment rate from August. We have the inflation inflation rate year over year from August. What do we have? Yeah, in China, we have the Kaixing manufacturing PMI from September. What do we have? What do we have? More stuff. Yeah, in Switzerland, we have the KOF leading indicators from September. Uh, yeah, yeah, what do we have in Great Britain? We have the uh, GDP growth rate quarter over quarter, final quarter two, and the GDP growth rate year over year, final quarter two. Uh, what do we have here yeah, at 11 a.m. in the EU? We have the unemployment rates from August and the inflation rates year on year, year over year, flash from uh, September. And what do we have? Ba, 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 ba. much more yeah uh, from 2 30 p.m gonna have uh, a bunch of uh, data release in the u.s uh yeah 3 45 p.m the uh, chicago pmi from september and at 4 p.m michigan consumer sent uh, sentiment final from september on saturday uh, just in china uh, yeah, on saturday october the first uh, the renminbi, the Chinese yuan, the renminbi will be officially added as a um, in the basket of the SDR from the IMF, you know, the currency, the basket's currency. Uh, the Chinese yuan is going to be the fifth uh, component of uh, that particular basket, you know, made of uh, US dollar, euros, uh, Grand Britain's uh, pound and uh, Japanese yen. So for the moment, the percentage is 40% dollars, 40% euros, uh, 11 to 12% of uh, the Grand British pound and the remaining 8 to 9% for the yen. But now uh, with the renminbi, the uh, Chinese yuan, uh, everything is going to be uh, rebalanced and uh, we're going to have to, they're going to have to recalculate, you know, uh, 
the weight of each uh, of each uh, currency you know in the baskets so that's it for the economic calendar so now uh, let's have a look at commodities in the US well, commodities worldwide first of all uh, we're gonna uh, we're gonna have a look at uh, crude oil okay crude oil oh, I'm sorry I have a problem over here with the uh, um with uh, all the analysis i uh, i've done and we are in a it's a inside week candle as i said uh, the uh, 52 weeks moving average is acting as a support and i'm expecting oil to bounce over here and then to go higher so you can see here we have the uh, resistance over here and i'm going to trace I'm expecting oil to move like that okay that's the move I'm expecting for oil you know like that expecting oil to come bounce over here and then to go higher so we're gonna we test the uh, 49 dollars a barrel and above 50 dollars a barrel so we're gonna go and climb higher towards the 60 dollars a barrel so we're gonna see if oil can maintain that level and uh, remember that we talk about that health and shoulders that's the right shoulder so now we're forming the right shoulder i'm expecting oil to go higher now let's have a look at the lco the brent oil and yes over here you can see uh, and the analysis you see here the shoulders we can we can take this as the left shoulder but we can take your and this all of these and now you see that we are here you see inside weak candle maybe we are going lower maybe that's a a uh, bullish flag over here you see boom and then over here that uh, small bullish flag over here and then bam maybe we can uh, i'm expecting oil to go higher to bounce higher you know that's it I, th I think that market yeah it's already open so yeah we are moving higher you can see here we have a yes we have a, a gap yeah we have a gap a huge gap over here inside week uh, inside day candle for the moment but we are also in an inside week uh, candle so i'm expecting oil uh, to go up you see the 52 weeks moving average acting as a uh, support over here and we have that resistance the uh, 21 weeks moving average as a resistance so i'm expecting uh, markets oil price oil price to go higher and you can see here we have a gap we have a gap here between 49.50 and 50 dollars a barrel so i'm expecting oil to go back and retest that resistance of a 50 and 50 uh 50 51 dollars a barrel okay so now let's have a look at gold precious metals first of all gold bum 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 okay in the big picture you can see gold over here you know bullish uh, a bullish flag you can see here boom gold is moving higher so i'm expecting gold to go from 1340 to 1360 yeah that's it i'm expecting gold to move higher as you can see over here is moving higher so that's great uh, let's have a look at the gld gld the uh, dtf and same scenario over here a uh, that's a, a bullish flag you see bullish flag over here bullish flag and you can see that that's a steps stairs a pattern a bullish step stairs pattern you know we go up we stabilize then break up we stabilize and then over here a break and move up so the target first of all is uh, 
130 dollars and then 133 24 maybe it's actually over here 35 dollars and the overall target is 140 dollars now let's have a look at silver silver over here uh, yeah i was expecting a, a i was expecting a bearish uh, to put on a some bearish trades but that didn't happen because uh, for the moment that remain uh, very very uh, bullish i was expecting over here below 1850 to go uh, bearish over here you know below the uh, 21 weeks moving average to go bearish in pursuit of the uh, 52 weeks moving average over here but that didn't happen and we remain bearish we as you can see we're going on the opposite way so that's great for silver so now over here that's a continuation so we want to see silver to go up towards the $20 an ounce a troy ounce for that's it for silver and silver also as you can see that's a, a bullish uh, bullish flag over here you know another uh, step stairs pattern you know so we remain bullish on silver and the overall target is uh, 21 dollars uh, an ounce so let's have a look at the slv silver iShares etf and same thing you know i was expecting over here a more uh, bearish uh, mm, operations you know below the 21 weeks ama but we rejected it we rejected it and now we are moving higher uh, higher towards the uh, 1945 so now i'm gonna wait and if we can we test uh, that particular uh, resistance over here confirmation i'm gonna go uh, bullish uh, above uh, twenty dollars uh, twenty dollars over here on the iShare L and if we rejected it so now i'm gonna go uh, i'm gonna put on some bearish uh, operations some bearish trades and now to finish let's have a look at bitcoin bitcoin versus the us dollar uh, remember the cup and handle pattern that's the handle the cup uh, here the cup and now we're forming the handle i think that's that's the end i don't know yet but we are still we remain in that big inside candle you see here we are moving sideways and now we are kind of going up but mm, i don't think so i see something like that so maybe over here yeah inside weak candle mm, i don't know we don't have any direction yet but below mm, below 585 dollars then boom maybe uh, we can play some uh, some uh, short positions you know short positions to go from 585 towards the uh, 565 yeah 20 points that's a uh, yeah over here 585 towards 565 20 points yeah to the downside that's possible so we don't have any uh, direction yet but i remain um, that remains a uh, very very uh, uh, bearish you know for the moment we are moving sideways you see one two three weeks of inside week candle and if you count that big candle over here that's more than two months you know yeah from august yeah two months you know uh, moving uh, uh moving sideways okay so that's it for this week okay people all right that's it for this episode so thanks for watching and please subscribe share comments and have a successful trading week and i see you next week guys thank you bye